Okay, so what we saw with our little friend Hans was the fact that um, he actually has uh, an ID map that defines what parts of his um, different parts of his body have different IDs for you know materials for leather for things like that right so this can be for anything and it's typically uh, just a nice quick way uh, that can be used in other programs including game engines of assigning certain textures or materials uh, to different parts of a model especially if you have several models that are similar so I'm just going to show you how to make the ID map real quick so this is uh, just inside of Arnold but you can see I have uh, some of the components of this box uh, this machine that I modeled out and you can see all these like let me actually I'll close that for right now all these little details here in it see and so it's just something I saw um, that somebody there we go somebody had uh, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Let me model that out, <laughs> you know, just like concept wise. And I was like, that's pretty sweet. Let me do that. So I modeled this puppy out, um, just this machinery um, that could be duplicated in a warehouse and stuff. And some of the components that we see could have different pieces to it. So when I look at one of these pieces, like this one here or like one of these in general um, I have this texture on it but if I actually go in um, and assign a brand new material like let's say a blend or something like that so here's my model, and I might decide that uh, on this particular model, I want there to be different sections, right? Maybe this larger piece is going to be a certain type of metal. Maybe inside of here it'll be something else, and inside of here, and maybe these pieces would be something else as well, right? So what I'd want to do is I'd want to UV map this guy out. And I'd also want to uh, double check, and this is one where I, I should have like spent a little more time on. You see how some of these are a little bit bent? This can give you some errors, so you have to be a little more meticulous with some of your UVs. So if I actually, I'll see you later. If I actually go in, uh, and I just start to make sure that some of these guys are a little bit more aligned to the texture grid so that there's no bleeding um, that'll actually help me out a lot so oops. so if I went in and just started um, optimizing some of these and I wouldn't have to do this for everything but what it will do is make it let me show you a little trick I'm not gonna do it for everything but what I want you to see is that if I actually can line certain things up there's a few options inside of here where I can match to grid so I could actually grab things and say oh match to grid Boop. and what you'll notice is that it suddenly adjusts things so bam it's actually um, on the grid itself and what that does even if it's a little bit off I mean I'd still probably want to do a little bit of alignment but um, what it does is it helps me 
so that uh, when there are pixels involved and things are going on, that they won't be going across pixels. And once again, some of my tools will probably help me out with that, but if I get them relatively lined up, at least most of them, you know, and, and get these guys lined, and then when I go over it like so and say, oh, match to grid, it'll even things off and kind of make sure that they're snapping the way they are. So that's just one thing to consider. See, just taking some of those and tweaking them out as, as they should be. I'm not going to spend a ton of time, but I just wanted you to kind of see that so that if something's going on and you're like, why isn't this lining up properly, you know, or why is there bleeding? More often than not, that's why is that it's actually not on uh, the grid itself and it's just giving me some grief, you know, and if I actually do that, let's move you guys over to this side. If you, if it's a simpler model, you probably won't even have to worry about it that much. But the reason I'm doing it is because I knew there was like a little bit of texture bleeding and I'm just trying to get rid of that. And once I have these a little bit more even, then I can go in and then just say, oh, match to grid just to kind of give it a little bit more. But I think that's that's about enough right now. I just want to show you the process. So what I would have to do is I basically set this up so that I color code what areas are going to be what. Okay. So in other words, maybe the chromish metal is going to be blue. Okay. And if I've properly UV mapped this, then it makes it a lot easier for me to say, oh, this area is going to be blue, right? Um, you know, and how, how that's going to actually work. I might have to break some things up if I want to make it a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier. Like uh, the interiors, maybe it's this part, which means that, oh, then that means it's these guys on the outside I might want to uh, utilize differently just so that I can actually get uh, the material I want but just so you can kinda see how this works I create multiple materials to color code right so I might designate blue is gonna be metal right red is going to be um, rubber or something like that yellow is going to be something else and then I would just make these new materials and assign them to those sections so I have that selected and I say okay this is blue and I assign that material to that area So then I go, okay, well, what else is going to be that color? Or what else is going to be uh, metal? And then I start to decide, oh, well, maybe it's these guys here, these faces. So if I grab those faces and say, oh, yeah, these are also going to be that same metal. So I'd assign that material to those pieces. And then I'd say, oh, you know what? These interior pieces, I want it to be yellow, whatever that's going to be. Right? So then I'd go in. And I'd select them. 
and that's going to be my yellow. Then I'd grab these guys, which are those other areas. Say that's going to be red. And then I'll assign blue to the caps also. See? So I basically have assigned what I want where, and I'm going, oops, you know what? I don't want these parts here. This is went wiggy. There we go, that's better. So now I've properly added, like, differentiated which material by a color of a material that I put on it, okay? Now I have to transfer this into an actual map, okay? And what that means is I have to take this and then I have to um, convert it into a texture file that can then be used as my ID map. So how would I do that? I've got my model. I'm going to duplicate my model. Let me modify. Freeze. Hold that thought, Vivek. <laughs> That's OK. So I, this is I have my duplicate, and I'm just going to assign, just so you can see the difference, I'm going to assign a brand new material. Could be a Lambert, whatever. So this is my source. This is my target. Okay. So when I go in, I go into my rendering. Lighting and shading transfer maps. I want to bake that out. And I'm going to uncheck normal map. And I'm going to choose a diffuse map, not a shaded. The shaded will calculate lighting. I don't want lighting information. I just want these flat colors. Diffuse. We'll call this one. Oops, we, want, we don't want a DDS format. We want to do a, uh, uh, let's just do a Targa. And I'm going to call this one um, match underscore ID for like machine ID, right? Targa, create a new shader and connect the new shader to the target. Oh, and up here is where we actually set it up. So um, this guy, we see we have source target. This one is my target. This one is my source. So I'm going to transfer this info to a flattened image onto this one. And that's that'll be my ID map. So now that I have them both plugged in, I take this one and I just zero that out so they're sitting right on top of each other. Because it's going to do a projection of them. And if I want to see where it's scanning to make sure I turn on, right now it's displaying the mesh, I could say display envelope. And we see the envelope is way too huge for it to actually calculate properly. So I'm going to shrink that down a lot. Point 0.1, point 0.2. Maybe like a 0.5. 
0.3. Let's see what happens there. And I may have to do this a couple of times just to get the right one. I just want it barely, barely over. Might even make it smaller than that, but let's just see what happens. So I'm just going to go in and say, oh, and make sure you tell it what resolution. 1024 by 1024, 2K, whatever. Usually you don't need it to be super high. Uh, we're going off of uh, world space. Medium quality. Let's do bake and close, and you'll see it calculating on the bottom left. We may have to just try a couple of settings, depending on what mesh we're utilizing. I have a medium sampling quality. So let's take a look as we separate these. Not bad. Check it out. So this one is the, the new one. This one's with the flattened image that it created. You see that? This would also be a good time that if I wanted to zero this back out, and let's say I wanted also an ambient occlusion as well, that I could do it inside of here. But I could also do that inside of um, Painter, and it tends to do a better one anyway but I generated my ID map okay now that I've got that take this file export selection I'm just gonna call it match one So when I go into Painter, New, and select Template, PBR, Roughness, select Mesh, Mach 1, sure, why not, boost that up import and I want to bring in that ID map oh silly me source images a different one. Where did you save to? Let me just double check. Oops, wrong one. Oh, it saved it into the textures folder. Cute. Okay. So I go to the Textures folder. That looks like it. I just want to make sure. I think that's the old one. Mock ID. There you are. This one. And we hit OK. is thinking there it is so I here's my model and in my texture settings select ID map bam there it is there okay so I've got my ID map that I generated and now when I actually go in 
to make my materials, I can actually assign different materials to that ID map and then make a uh, smart material if I like or, you know. So if I actually go in and I make, let's just say, uh, for the sake of, I'm just going to pull this one in, galvanized metal, right? But I don't want that all over it. So whether it's in a group or not, so if I want it in a group, I could just um, add a folder, put that in it, and call that folder metal. And then I right click, and here's where you add it, add mask with color selection. So now it's asking where are we going to put it. Here's the ID mask. It's already saying, hey, where there it is. What do you want to do with it? Pick a color. And see, it already pulls up that ID mask. And now I just say, oh, put it where the blue is. Boom. And there it is. Okay. And we see it's in all those areas. Looks pretty clean. Nice. And then, uh, so this metal layer, I could add details, I could add whatever, I could add whatever inside of this metal group, and uh, it's only going to be in there. Right. So I can add more things to it. Oops, you know what? I did a fill layer, not a uh, group. Geesh. Oh, no, that was right. Okay. So let me back up just so you could see it. So galvanized metal, add a folder, put that in the folder. See? Call this one metal. Right click, add color mask with selection. Pick color blue. So now, here's my galvanized metal. You can see it only shows inside of here. And I can add whatever I want in here. I can add a layer to paint details into there, right on top of it. Like if I wanted to go in and choose a brush, and then uh, choose a material to paint in there like this plastic, but I want to make it uh, like a dirt, a grunge, and I want it to, you know, just kind of paint it in like this, where I could just start to detail some stuff out, or whatever, you know, or if I'm using it as a smart material, I'd probably want a randomizer of some sort or a curvature map. Once that's done, ah, cool. Once that's done, uh, I go to my next one, I make another folder. And whatever is supposed to be inside of there, I would put in, right? And that could be anything, you know, or material I make or whatever the case. And I would just drag that in as well, just so you can kind of see. But I'd have to do the same thing to this one, where I'd add a color mask. Pick a color, say yellow, so it's only inside of there. So if I select it, the cool thing is I can always go back in and change that and say, wow, you know, nope, I want that. No, I want that, or that, or that, or that, or whatever it is supposed to be. And create it however I want it to be. So I could even make one that if I built it that way that I could have an emissive and just kind of boost it up, right? If I go into the channels 
and said that I wanted a like a transmissive reflective oh emissive here we go boom so if I here's the emissive and I could actually paint that out and really push its parameters so instead maybe I go want that turn on emissive and now it's going to be bright no matter what so now it's the glow see and then the last one would just be the trim that's there once I have all that stuff this is kind of cool because I have, uh, okay, this is going to be the glow for that group. So I've got my glow, got my metal, and then I'd make one more. That would be the trim. And in the trim, I would put whatever I wanted there. <clears throat> you see it's everywhere again. Right click. Bam. And the cool thing is, remember, you can always go in and change what it's going to be. Right now, what I could do is I could take all these guys, um, yes, machine material. Okay, and I take all these guys and I tuck them into there. And then I can right click and say create smart material. Where'd it go? There it is right there. So the smart material is something that if I actually apply it to something, I can just add it to whatever I want, right? So the benefit is now if I had other models that I brought in that had that same ID map of like this color is metal, this color is the glow, this color is that, I could then drag my smart material onto those and it'll acknowledge them. I just have to plug in the ID map for it. Uh, but it would also allow me to use things like if I take this model and I said, you know what? I want more than the ID map. I want to bake maps. And it could make its own ID map as well based off of either vertex, material, color. So I could have actually generated in here as well. Um, but check it out. If I say none, and then I say, oh, create ambient occlusion, create a curvature map, and then just say, bake those in. Uh, let's see what it did. So I may have to uh, do a little tweak. There we are. It's fine. And you notice now it shows I have an ambient occlusion as well as uh, a curvature map and the curvature map is where you can actually have rust start to grow from edges and stuff but I can also use that curvature map in my texturing so if I went in and we look at our textures there's my ambient occlusion and I drop that in Actually, I have to make a layer for that. 
Let's make. Uh, let's open you up. Actually. Fill layer. And then in the properties of that fill layer, where it says base color, I add the ambient occlusion. There's my ambient occlusion. And then I tell it to not go on normal, but to be multiplied. You see that? But it just depends on what you're doing, where it's actually sitting, right? So if I actually put that down here, and you can just make adjustments that way. But anything I do, I can make a smart material out of and then drop it in. But does that make sense as far as like making the actual um, ID map itself? Now, I haven't actually tried making an ID map in Painter because you I got used to making them. So I'll have to check that out, whether you need the texture file and then it just makes it or if it designates it, which I'm curious about if I were to say, OK, let me bake an ID map. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, hold on one sec. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, I see. Oh, I think, okay. Yeah, I, I'm not, I, I suppose you could vertex color it, but um, I like just making it out of, uh, at least for the time being, straight out of uh, Maya. And then I've just got my nice clean ID map in there. But I did folders just to separate things inside of the layers, see? So I had a trim, a glow, and a metal. And then I took all those and made them into a, uh, whatchamacallit, into a um, master material. So that when I actually go in now, I can just uh, bring in that master material and then just go to them and say, oh, color selection, and then choose if I needed to or if I have a defined. Uh, if I'm going into a game engine, it's always going to go off of those certain colors and then when I make an instance material. So all I do is swap out the ID map and then it's automatically going to separate things for me. Right? Um, so I know it does that in Unreal. I would presume it does it in Unity. Questions? As far as generating the ID map and just bringing it in? So, so, so you can 